Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, we're back, folks. May I say, possibly the best weather day oh, of man. history in New York. Oh, you ain't kidding. You're getting no pushback Woo! from me. Chris. Beautiful. Blue, not a cloud. I look for a cloud. No cloud in my coffee. Clouds in my coffee. You're so vain. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, I took, I took the wife out for lunch, walked around. Yeah. I don't believe the lunch part, but the rest is true. I love the crisp. Pho? Pho. Uh, uh-huh. uh, no, the crispiness. I went to, by the way, it's I'm schwitzing over here. It's 1,000 degrees well, in this room. This hot box we live in, this weird Hamas bunker. Yeah, well, I was just in the steam room also. Ah, uh, didn't take. Which, by the way, I got some steam room stories. Ooh, I don't know if I should tell them. Ooh, another mysterious black man? No, no, something else. But uh, I'm all over White? the place. I got a lot of stuff to no. talk about. But yeah, I was in Philly. A couple of weeks ago, and the drive down, we we're in shorts. It was 85 yeah. degrees. It was summer in the city, and uh, we drove back. I mean, with 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 towels on our heads and blankets and Turn electric <laughs> Palestinian <laughs> Middle you know, Eastern now electric oven mitts and thick socks. Oh yeah, <laughs> it changed like that. Yes, like, like Ellen Page. But overnight, I, lo- I love it. I love the fall. I love the autumn. I like saying autumn. It's fun and pretentious. And yes. uh, there's leaves crunching. My father's gay. You got that right. Yeah, the the leaves are turning red. My asshole's bleeding. It's it's very nice. Fall. Why does autumn and fall? Why do they get two? Well, you have summer and uh, hot time. Yeah, uh, what a win- hot time. Winter and, uh, yeah, good point. I lost my phone. My wallet's gone. <laughs> Got a new phone. It took me two and a half hours. It was a horrible process. Nightmare. They should be able to, that should be zippier. Yeah, it's supposed, you should be able to tap it like this. Bloop. Yeah. Well, remember when they had a thing with the phone where you could... And then this person got the information. That's what someone was just telling me, it and it didn't cool work. Feature. It was it was Jamie at Rogan. He was like, "Watch this," oh, and I was yeah. excited to get his number. You know, he's a big deal. That oh guy. yeah. And he was like, "Here comes my number," and he was touching it, and he's like, "Ah, it's not working today." And I was nah. like, "Ah, one of those digits." What uh, what what number are we on? Because I got the iPhone nine over here. I'm I'm way behind. I had a 10x, uh, or maybe that's my dick size. Hello, folks. Uh, this is a fifth, fourteen. What's the brand new one? No, the brand new one's 15, oh, really? and this is a 14. Okay. I'm one behind the brand new one. I believe the 15 just came out. Why didn't you? Oh, okay. Why didn't you? Right. I was going to say, why didn't you go to the tip top? Well, it was, I think it was bigger or whatever. I like this size. The mini I is the same nice. size. Agreed. And um, at a certain point, I don't like the nine cameras back here. Yeah, it. yeah. Uh, it looks like a droid's face. It's too many holes. I just wanted uh, space. But anyways, the autumn is, autumn and fall, winter and winter. Spring, Spring and Hitler. Yeah, I guess they get two. Yeah. Autumn uh. gets two. That's how nice it is. So nice they named it twice. Yeah, I like that. Well, autumn, uh, fall is the best. October rules. You got you got playoff baseball, which I love. College football is into conference play. The Halloween. NFL swing in. Halloween, I fucking love. Yeah, you got Thanksgiving creeping up. That's yep. fun. And then Christmas is not too far. The whole thing together. It's a jolly good time. It's leaves falling. It's very exciting. And I'm sad because every Halloween the last five years, I've gone out to the, Seattle to hang out with the kids right. and dress them up and throw blood on their face. And now I'm having my own goddamn kids, so I can't go. I will say Halloween in New York is a little bit of a bummer. I mean, you get the, the moments where Batman comes on the train and then this Joker and you go, ah, you fucking assholes, fight it out. Woohoo. And everybody laughs. But then you also see the kids that have at 6 p.m. going into a Dwayne Reed to get candy from the cashier. Yeah, it's depressing. And, and, and Halloween without children, is it takes you have to go to like a sex party. That's huh? the only thing you can do. You can have kids because they feel like, well, I got candy. And you right. see them, and they're, and they're cute. Yeah. They come door to door if you're in the suburbs, and you go, oh, great outfit. Great. You need that, or you need like 
you're Elvira, I'm oh, Bugs Bunny, and I'm eating you out. You know yes, what I mean? Like yes. a sexy adult Halloween party where the tits are out yes. and the, the fishnets. You're saying you got to go all kid or all adult. Exactly. I see, full I see. Full adult, full kid. Yeah, yeah. And well, don't mix the two. No, no, don't bring a kid to a sex party. Uh-uh. That'll get ugly. But yeah, you keep dressing like whores, ladies. We love the witch with the cleavage. We love the the Playboy bunny, the the sexy nurse, all that shit. Keep yeah. it up. Yeah, I love tits. I just love seeing them. It is weird to have a private part on your chest. You ever think about that? You're holding a private part right here. That's yeah. a lot. It's exciting, and you can really have a dippy do. Oh, show it. I love a dippy do. Um, and that's that's fun. Dippy do da. And now they're having shorter things with the panties Woo! and the triangle and the business. It's, it's all pipes. Pipes. It all comes back too. The baggy jeans are back. I see the low rise one. Women is back where they show in the the cleavage. You can see a little clit plopping up, mm -hmm. and the butthole is almost there. It's uh, it's all 90s, coming back. Well, I was just walking up the street, Fifth Avenue or whatever, and I saw a, like a business lady with like business pants and like heel. I love like a, oh. I'm not going to a dance club with heels or a Halloween costume. I'm not shoving it in your ass. I'm just, this is just what I wear. That's I like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had the, uh, the lady, I had to have a, I feel bad. I had to do a sit down. I was like, when I met you, you used to dress like this, and I showed her a photo, and I was like, you had a trench coat on with heels, and she was like a working gal. And trench she, coat? Well, you know, like a long black coat, like a uh -huh. like a sexy woman in, in charge thing. And then uh, I was coat. like, look at you now. You're wearing a, a, a sweater vest and, and uh, baggy jeans and flip-flops. I'm like, who, who have you become? That's why I just keep dressing classy. I think it's important. Classy? You gotta that stay. Shirt's, that shirt's dingier than my asshole. Look By the way, I thing. just found oatmeal. Look at this. I was like oh. out and about. <laughs> I went to a meeting. I was like at Starbucks. Woo. And this is with me flicking it off. Oh it was like oatmeal God. stuck to it because I was eating like Costanza. Those ducks are faded. I don't know what those are. They're, it's turning a light gray here. It's not good. It's a hue. And, uh, but you know, what can you do? Sure, it, classy. Oh, I was at the gym. I see. And uh, and also, this is my favorite shirt. So it's, it's a cute shirt. But yeah, autumn is is here. It's the tits. It's lunch. I love it. Can't beat it. You don't want it to go away, but it has to go away because that's why it's so special. Cycles. Period. Yeah. So uh, a lot to talk about. We'll, we'll we'll gloss over the Jew Palestine. Um, I feel like I'm boring everybody with Europe, so I don't want to get too much Give in there. Give me some Europe. Come on, shove some Europe in my ass. Let me just say this. At one point, we went to Paris, and then me and Doug had to go back to Manchester, which is a tough town. Mm. That's where David Beckham played. Oh, yeah, the United. And I believe Oasis ah. is Manchester. Uh, yeah, then Liverpool is the Beatles. Right. Okay, there's, a, there's a, var a rivalry there. It's the Beatles and also where a Titanic left from, I believe. Oh. Ah. Oh, how do you like that? Iceberg. Um, iceberg Smell swim. ice, can you? Yeah. The movie's not good. Nah, it's seven hours, too. Paint me. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so we go back to Manchester. It was a bit of a bummer, but I'm spending a fortune on hotels, flights. You know, I'm paying for Doug everything. And so when we get back to Manchester, we're taking a train the next day to uh, Birmingham. Ah, Ozzy Osbourne. Is that right? That's right. Okay. These towns, they haven't really grown. They're still just kind of small and a bummer. Uh -huh. But me and Doug had to sleep in the same room, which is always a little off-putting. Same room. I slept in the same room as Doug at your bachelor party. Oh, really? I thought it was on pudding. Yeah. <laughs> pudding pop. <laughs> but uh, slept in the same room, which is fine with me. You know, we had two single beds. But uh, I wake up in the morning. Woo! Baby, the rooster's crowing. I take my sleep hat off. I go, how'd you sleep? He goes, I'll tell you how I slept. Puts the phone up. He filmed me snoring because it was that oh, bad. Oh, no. He was like, I could, I got about two seconds of sleep. Oh, you geez. killed me. You ruined everything. So the whole next day, Doug's like this, and he hates me. There's a tension. And I got to tell you, that video was not pretty. I don't see you as a uh, snorer. Woo! I'm sawing lugs all day long. <laughs> You know, oh, that shit. That's was... terrible. Usually it's a fat shit. Maybe you, when you're sleeping sitting up or something like that. Because if I no. fall asleep sitting up, I'll get a couple of vibrations. I had a couple of yoo -hoos. That might have done it. But uh, it was bad news. I said, you got to just roll me over. He's like, I didn't want to get up and touch you. You know, it's a little weird. So he, I ruined his life. But 
We got on the train to Manchester, to Birmingham, did shows in Birmingham. It's fun if you're bombing in these England towns and you go, well, what about uh, what about Liverpool? They go, fucking Liverpool! Right. These pussies! Uh. So you get them up and at them again. It's like saying, give it up for the troops. Right, you get a little nice out. Yes, yes. So sleep in the same bed. Uh, then this podcast hits me up called Have a Word. Mm. Great guys, great pod. It's like a big England podcast. It's like mostly football talk, but they have Shane Gillis on, they had Bird on, they had all these people. So I was like, all right, I want to do it. So, but we're going to Scotland the next day. Ah, Scotland, freedom, fucking fight to blue Yes. Hold. Is he Scottish? Who, Mel Gibson? You no, know, the uh, the Braveheart. William Wallace? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. They fought like warrior poets and won their freedom. He was seven feet tall if he was a foot. Considered the most historically inaccurate film of all oh, time. Oh, really? Yeah. How about that? Is, yeah. The, is uh, he a real guy? He's a real guy, but uh, I don't think he was... He, he had some innovations, but okay. uh, he certainly never ruled over Scotland and like took over. Oh. And I think the princess of France or the queen of whatever the fuck that lady, she was like six at the time, which I tried to do a joke about... But people were mad about it. Hey, she was six years old. This movie sucks. I'm like, you want Mel Gibson fucking a six year old? Yeah, good point. Never worked. Well, if they want like a hey, that that person's in a wheelchair. He's got to be played by a wheelchair. We got to have a toddler in there. Yeah, that's right. Uh huh. So fun uh, film though. Yeah, good movie. I mean, that movie changed everything. You had people going blue paint. Right. You know, uh, Scotland's cool. Give me a skirt. Well, my family's Campbell and Scottish. That's a character in the movie Campbell. Oh. So we were like, we were jerking off to yeah, that movie. Totally. I, I would, there was two cassettes. We watched it like three times a oh, week. We were like, Campbell, yeah. oh, Campbell God. soup. That's your Black Panther. It was very exciting. Um, so yeah, we go. So they go. All right, how about this? Well, you'll wake up in Birmingham. We'll pick you up in a car at nine a.m. Okay. Drive you to Liverpool. Sure. You do the pod, and then you get back in the car and drive four hours to Scotland. Now, how far is Liverpool and Birmingham? That was about two and a half. Okay, so and a four-hour ride to Scotland. Yeah, so I said, fuck it, I'll do it. So I gave Doug the room, he got to sleep, and uh, I just hightail out of there at 9 a.m., I'm, I'm on no sleep, you, you try to fall asleep in the car, and I had this guy. I got a two and a half hour ride ahead of me. I'm already dreading this. You, you want to get a little snooze in, a little alone time. Also, you know, Doug's great, but we've been together for nine years. Absolutely. It's nice to get in that car. I get in the car. Guy's a huge comedy fan. Oh, boy. I mate. He's got that Liverpool accent. You can be talks. English people, they, they invented the language, but they're the worst at it. Right. I, they can't say shit. He's like, I my 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 mate. And I'm like, ah, and he's like, what? And then we break it down. He's like, how long you been doing comedy? But it's so, it's the whole sentence takes a blip of a millisecond. And I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know, 16, 17 years. He's like, oh, that's crazy, mate. That's crazy. And then you're like, all right, I think it's over. And then he just kept going the whole two hours. And eventually I go, ah, I got a phone call. And so now I'm in the back laying down going, uh huh, you got that right. Every, like, intermittently, every six seconds, I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Holy shit. What are you, nuts? You can't do that. I know. Trump again. What do you, what's going on the wall? And he uh, he would be like, you, you done there, mate? I'm like, oh, hold on. I'm on hold. It was crazy. <laughs> it sucks, too, because you're not getting the piece you desire yes, still. Yes, yes. But you're it was getting still... out of the dialogue, but you're still on in this mode. Yes. Well, you know when you hear a, like an annoying sound and it's like like a, a faucet, like bloop, bloop. Yes. At least it's... Uh, rhythmic. There's, there's a rhythmic pattern. Right. It's worse when it's intermittent and you're like, I don't know when it's coming next. I was about to say this exact thing. So that's how the dialogue was. Like, it'd be quiet for a minute and a half or two minutes. You're like, oh, maybe it's... A, and then, boom, he'd hit you with it. So he just was so bored up there. I could tell he wanted to... One of the dialogue, but I just couldn't do it. It's too hard. It takes too much effort, and you're going to a pod. Right. You want to save a little bit, and then you don't want to be elitist, like, oh, this fucking driver. But it's anybody. If, if Prince Charles was up there, I'd be like, ah, I don't care. I can't do this. Yeah, I completely agree. And didn't we talk about this recently where there should be? Or is there a barber shop where it's like, you put in, I need a haircut, and I don't want to talk? Uber has that. 
Oh, do they? Yeah, Uber made a, an option. Yeah, something like that is nice, because it's like, I, I'm a friendly guy, I like you, let's chat, or let's talk for eight minutes. Yes. Eight minutes. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm here doing this, uh, you know, uh, my wife is uh, nice, and my sister's cool, and my dad's gay, and uh, that's it. That's, that's it. all the time you have today. <laughs> and then you take a nap. Right, right. It's like a therapist. Our time is done. She's like, all right, great, here's 250. Yeah, it's tough. That's yeah. why I love New York, because it's all foreign folks, they're talking on the phone. Right. And you're oh, just in the back. The I, I go, you go to Austin and everyone's like, so where are you headed? What yes. are you doing? And you're like, ah, oh. no, it doesn't matter. And the wider the town or like the, the like Salt Lake City, you're not getting out of there without doing a full diatribe. No, yeah, you want not whites. Yes, that's a great argument for immigration. Give me a non-speaking English person who doesn't want to talk about my day. Has no interest. And he's just on the phone. Sometimes you look at the phone and, like, the, the clock is on there. They've been on the phone for, like, 14 hours, yeah. 85 minutes, <laughs> yeah. and 79 seconds. And they're still angry. Like, you're still angry after 14 hours. Yeah, it's just going. I think they just kind of hang out on the phone. I don't blame them. And you're sitting in a car all day. you gotta, you got to socialize yeah so we get to the pod pod was great great guys killer guys super fun and then you get back in that car and i'm in the back you know when you nothing worse than not knowing how long the drive actually is mm. so i'm putting in scotland gps oh just the country just the country well, that's scotland. just the border i'm sure i know i know you still gotta get in the city go to the hotel so it was just a long four hours and we probably did two hours of chit chat again same driver and then I had to do the, ah, the wife, hold on, I can't talk and fight at the same time. And I would lay down behind him, and that really helped. Right. So eventually he turned music on, and I was like, I'm free. And I don't want to shit on the guy. He might hear this. He was very nice. He was a cool dude. I just, I just can't do it. I completely understand. Now, when you go from England to Scotland, do they give you a thumbs up? Is there a booth? Or is it just it's like going to a state? It just I didn't, says welcome. Didn't see one border. Didn't see one booth. Not a machine gun. Not an arm raise. Nothing. Well, it's all UK. Yeah, that's so, it. So, But I wasn't sure if there was like a guy that was like, how you doing? Yeah. You know, welcome to Scotland. You got anything in the trunk or anything like that? Nothing. But here's the clinker. I went to the show that night, and I was like, here we are, last show, and we're in the UK. I was in the UK last... Boo! They all booed UK. Ah, uh, they want out. They want out. I mentioned the Queen. Boo! And I'm like, I don't know. I can't keep track of you guys. It, right. It's like going to Texas and being like, oh, hey, Biden, huh? Boo! And you're like, oh, I thought this was America. Right. You know, so it's all topsy-turvy. Get to Scotland. Check in the hotel. Here we are, the last show of a month long, multiple countries, multiple flights. Here we go. This is it. Sold out theater. I don't know, 200, 200, 2,500 people. Bombed. Oh, come on. I mean, it was bad. What? Then some guy did a YouTube thing about, like, I saw Norman. It's all Scott. I saw Norman. They fucking I He got booed. <laughs> apparently I got I can't do the Scottish accent, but uh, apparently I got booed by a, like a section which I didn't even hear. Oh jeez, it was bad. I mean they they were hooting and hollering. You know what's bad when Doug's on? Uh -huh. Doug, you're damn right you do. We do the uh, we do the the crossover. You know he's bringing me up uh -huh. and he goes he's covered in sweat and he goes, ooh, that's all I got was a oh, no. So you know you get so what the, town is this? Uh, Glasgow. Okay. Not to mention, they go, you're going to walk from the hotel, you're going to get stabbed, it's all needles, it's all knives, watch out. And uh, so that's weird. There's a there's a tension in the air in Scotland. Oh, boy. It's a beautiful place, Glasgow, but man, they, there's something going on over there. And uh, we I get out there, and I'm kind of cruising for like 20, and then one guy's like, blah, 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 and I'm like, huh? And that then the whole show falls apart. One other guy goes, shut the fuck up, mate. And now they're fighting. Oh, Jesus. It was bad. Me and Doug, both covered in flop sweat. I get out of there. I go, that was hell. We go to bed, fly home, go to Skank So that's Europe. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, I what do you think it was? Were they just drunk or not understanding or too rowdy? Or is it just the heroin and the whatever? I think they were shit housed. I think they were pre-gaming. And I think they're, they're so keyed up. They're like, hey, this American guy came here. Let's, let's have a good night. And uh, the new stuff was really tanking. It had to be like a pitch perfect joke. And right. I got a lot of DMs like, fuck those guys. I, I thought it was great. I, I'm a huge twos gay. So that was nice. But tough show, tough crowd. And good show on Comedy Central. 
And then me and Doug left there. And we were like, we got to get one drink. We went to a bar. The bar was amazing. There was a, a group of people who brought fiddles, just oh. regular fiddle people. And I put it on my Instagram. They're just fiddling. Super fun. A couple of people from the show there. I had a few Guinnesses and then went back and flew home and uh, woo. had a big hug with Doug in Reykjavik. We had a connection in Reykjavik. He uh-huh. went that way. I went that way. And that's that's all she wrote. A Reykjavik Doug hug. Yes. And then suddenly you were home R-D-H. for what? A couple of day? Uh, eight hours or so. Oh, my Nine God. Nine hours. Landed. Went <laughs> right to Vegas. But I got to tell you, Vegas is a hellish flight. Fluke coach. To Vegas, but compared to all the European stuff, it was a breeze. Interesting, because there's know, no passport and everything. No like passport, that? no customs. I got a small bag. I didn't have my giant bag. Um, by the way, I flew back from Skankfest. I see Dave Smith. He's in first class. Gomez, twenty C. Oh my God! What happened there? I was thirty four C because I bought it late. Uh huh. Um, but uh, I go, oh, what are you doing? It's he went from the king of the castle, cowboy hat, weird outfits, getting eyeliner, eyeliner, you know, seven pop, Pauly Shores blowing him, all these guys, uh, Smash Mouth or whatever, ICP, all up his ass. 20 C. Oh boy, poor guy. Cause yeah, he I mean he that's the funnest part of the festival, just watching Lewis crowd surf and oh. he wears makeup. He's dressed like Dracula. Yeah, he's, I mean he's, he's really <laughs> something for a couple days. Yeah, he's like Trudeau. He's the prime minister, he's got blackface on. And then 20 C. Ah, oh, poor guy. Well, hopefully things pick up next year. But talk about a just a reality check right out of the gate. Now, where are you on the Skankfest location debate? Because he posted, should we do Skankfest in Vegas again? Again, should we go to another town? I think Philly would be a great. City. I, yeah, I'm, I'm way more. Let's go East Coast. I, I don't like that that venue. I mean, it's impressive what they do with it, mm-hmm. but I don't like that walk. I don't like well, the, the walk. Is horrific. Forget about it. You call it a walk. I call it a jog. It's like the hurdles. Yeah, it's an I run full course. speed and hurdle heroin addicts <laughs> laying on the ground dying. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I Vegas was fun. They did two years there. We had a good run. Vegas has a nastiness to it, which uh-huh. I like. But Philly would be ideal. They can just find a shit house, warehouse in Kensington. We'll do it up. Yeah, Philly would be nice. And also, he was like, well, we should go back to New York because so many of the comics live in New York. We wouldn't have to pay for hotels. But you're like, but that's the fun. Yeah. We're all in the hotel. You bump into each other. That's you true. come downstairs. The gambling is fun. True. Although I didn't gamble once the whole time I was there, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, DeRosa gambled with his sexuality, but... And his money also. Yeah. Quite a festival. Well, it's tough to go to a strip club for nine hours, come back, you're like, all right, I'm going home. And you live in a casino. Right. It's just full-on roulette, and you see, uh, oh, there's the uh, Are You Garbage Guys or whoever, and you're like, all right, I'll do a hand, and then you put down 300 bucks, you lose it, and you jerk off and go to bed. Speaking of the Garbage Guys, how great were they on that live Woo! episode? Both of them were humming, baby, firing at all sill. Hot dogs all the way. You know what I don't understand is some people are like, I don't like the live episodes. I'm like, I'm like on the floor. That was the best thing we've ever done. I think the audience wasn't mic'd because there was a problem at the venue, so people don't hear the laugh, but we were killing and banging and zinging. And- zinging and zanging. Everybody had a, a couple. Lev had a few bombs, but uh, he got re- one or two good ones got in. one or two. Ian Lahr closed it out with, his, with a banger. Uh, really a great time. Those garbage guys, are, they were really uh, in the zone. They were hot. Hot dogs. Yes. I mean, uh, I mean Ryan, was in the piss zone. They really had some good, good stuff. There was some great Zings and stories all around. So get excited for this Gramercy episode. You got to join the Patreon. By yeah, the way, at one sakes. point we did a pile on on you. You were right in the middle, and we all just went to oh, town it was on about the pants. Thirty-five minutes of the pants. The pants are in the trash, burned. Oh, gone. good. I had to sacrifice them. All right. And, uh, I hit Sarah a couple times for letting me go out in those pants. Please, she earned it. The very pants I was returning. But uh, what a World what a pants. night, Ian, Lara, Lev, Fur. By the way, Ian and Nate both on the Tonight Show together. Oh. How fun is that? Oh, wow. One doing stand-up, one doing panel. We're stand-up, baby. It's hot. It's back. But, uh, yeah, that was awesome, so make sure you check out that episode and the Patreon. Let me bitch about these ve- Yeah, but go to the Patreon. It's it's killer. But let me bitch about these venues. I, I can't stand these ve- the, the The theater, hey, you can't record in here. Well, we did it last time. Well, we just don't have the capacity. Well, we did it last time and the time before that. Well, we can't do it. It's like, just fucking do it. Oh, we're selling posters. Oh, that's going to be 30%. Uh, no, it's not. All right, fine. We'll waive it. Well, what are you making up all this horse shit for? I go to D.C., beautiful theater. 
I got Jason Katz filming me for clips and whatnot. And they go, uh, oh, is he filming all of it? I'm like, yeah, he's just going to shoot the show. And they're like, whoa, we didn't know he was filming all of it. Let me, let me, let me run it up the flagpole. And you're like, uh, why? What, what, what's the difference if he films all of it or half of it? And they're like, well, we just have to check it out. So eight guys are on mics. They have clipboards out. They're doing a huddle and a powwow. And they're like, all right, all right, we cleared it. It's cool. What does that mean? What is this, NASA with the FBI? Just, just let them film it. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand it, but... Uh... I don't know. It's like Secret Service is out there with the weird uh, ear thing, you know, that twirls. Oh, yeah, I like those twirls. I love the twirl. They really tuck into the neck. You see that? Don't you just assume... Anyone with one of those, I assume, can kill me with a finger. Oh, finger up the ass. Just... <laughs> yeah, you, know? you can charm your wife into blowing them. They, those guys are good. They can negotiate. Yeah, it's really fun. I always wanted to be one of those guys. I got to be... When I worked loss prevention at Sears, oh, I got to be yeah. one of those guys with the thing, and you'd be like this. We got uh, two black kids uh, looking at me funny. You know? It was pretty <laughs> It was pretty fun. It was fun to have. <laughs> yeah, Wow. Pretty easy to get in trouble over there. Um, Don't look at that guy funny. They'll yeah. get you. It was a great time, but uh, yeah, the venues are <laughs> wacky. But then, by the way, the venue also gave us some crazy, well, not the venue, but Live Nation. Live Nation. They gave us a big bonus, which was nice. So shout out to Live Nation. Thank you for the shell car. Me and Katz drove back from D.C. I'm like, he's like, we need gas. I'm like, we got to go to a shell. And I Google it. Oh, there's a shell in uh, Delaware. <laughs> so we had to go to Delaware to go to Shell. Yeah, they like palmed. It was like Shell fucking. Uh, it was like Goodfellas. They were palming us extra cash. Oh yeah, even well, though we didn't sell out. Well, they know they're raping people on these ticket prices. You know, with the the fees. Scaring right. Fee Han. I hate these fees. I love Fee Han so much. Uh, but My dog uh, we're, fees. we're going back to the Gramercy, December. 5th. Yeah, we're pushing it, baby. There's going to be 11 people there. 4th and final. Yeah, we're slowly just dwindling the audience down. This yeah. one's a good Christmas gift for you, your boyfriend. Yes, you know, you just bring some migrants in there. Let them sit in the seats. They need a, <laughs> they need a little cover anyway. They'll love it. Oh, we got we got Mexican jokes or who El Salvador. We'll throw those in. Yeah, come on by. December 5th, Gramercy. It's our 11th time. I mean, the Gramercy is just the stand to us at this point. That's true. We're just yeah. running sets there. But no, it's going to be a hot show. And we have somebody signed on who promised he's going to be there. He said promote, and he's very sexy. We should do an over-under on him showing. Yeah, he's very. He's in the, the want, the need. It was also funny because he was like, I can't come, I'm moving. And I was like, I'm currently holding a couch. Yes, exactly. You but I also would have loved to have not gone sure, because sure. I was moving. Although, of course, it was the time of my life and the best hang ever. So far. Moving is hell, though. Man, my friend Bill Sheff said it. He said, if you're moving a thousand miles or if you're moving upstairs, it's the same thing. It's a nightmare. Yeah, chef's kiss. And uh, it really it really is. I'm, I'm a very, uh, you know me, I like to, I like thin, my ducks in a row, as yes, they say. I yes. like to know where my stuff is. If someone moves it, I, I flip out a little bit. And so you're living in a house, and I don't know where my keys go. I don't know where this, and you try to accomplish something. You're like, all right, I'm going to hang this picture. Where's the double, like a little four uh, by six? I'm like, where's the double sided tape? I don't know what that is anymore. One of those 19 boxes. So then I look for it for eight minutes, and in that time, I find a dusty shoe, a fucking uh, a shoehorn, and an eye patch. And I'm like, let me put the eye patches with the eye patches. Oh, uh, sure. Let me find my peg leg. And then finally, you find Arr. the fucking uh, double sided tape. You come back and you go, okay, where are the scissors? The si- I don't know where the scissors go. Yeah. They're up my ass. And it just takes, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare because you already don't really want to hang this, but now it's more trouble to hang it. You're like, I didn't even want to hang it in the first place. Now you got me dumping boxes out to look for the double tape. Not to mention, you come across a yearbook. You go, oh, there's Shelly, my, the, my love of my life. She died in a train accident. Uh, I'm going to miss her. Exactly. And uh, you get it. I mean, and I have all the Ds. I got ADD. I got OCD. I right. got uh, many CDs, Pearl Jam Live. Sure, and, double Ds. And so uh, I can't. D-Day. I want everything in order, but it's so out of order, and I can't. I, 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 George is saying cut it. I want, but send, someone told me about this task rabbit. So I got, oh, I got a, a, a three men coming over to like <laughs> fuck my wife. One's gonna fold clothes. One's gonna put together baby yeah. stuff. The other one's gonna eat my wife out. And, oh, it's uh, an ass rabbit. I, I, I can't wait. So okay, well, film that. Put it on the Patreon. I want to see your wife get railed by eight guys for four dollars an hour. Me too. Oh yeah. Hashtag. 
But, uh, all right, well, I've been hogging it with Europe. Well, Europe's over, back in the USA, born in the USA, stillborn. What do you got? I got a lot. You can't say stillborn. I'm having a child oh, in two geez. days. Oh, jeez. What are sorry, you, crazy? Sorry, I forgot about you having a child. You're going to jinx it. Good, healthy kid, not retarded, very nice. How about those people, by the way? Don't say that. I know. Don't say that, people. <laughs> those are real. That's really something. That is happening. Well, I hope I don't crash. Why are you crazy? I know. Like, I, I know. I'll be okay. Hey, folks, this episode of Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Better Help. When your mental health starts to slip, everything else can quickly take a nosedive. If you're totally overwhelmed and have forgotten how to find the bright side of life, talking to a professional could be just what you need. Absolutely, I think it is. BetterHelp's online therapy is incredible. You can talk to a licensed therapist through video chat, by phone, or even by message. Getting the help you need has never been easier easier. You know I'm a therapy guy. I'm always talking about therapy, especially on my podcast, Mindful Metal Jacket. What's all we talk about is therapy. Alan Lefkowitz, one of the great therapists of all time. He may not be available here, but maybe he wouldn't be for you anyways. He's pretty tough. You might want a, a, a soft therapist. You might want a tough therapist. They're easy to find. Therapy works. You should be in it. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably need therapy, frankly. Yeah. Just take a quick quiz to get matched with a licensed therapist. If you ever need to switch therapists, you can change any time for no additional charge. No questions asked. Not a problem. You can do it. Everything is made easy here. Make your brain your friend with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tuesdays today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. BetterHelp dot com slash Tuesdays. Go do it. You'll feel good. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesday Story is brought to you by ExpressVPN. It's scary movie season, but some of the best ones aren't available for streaming in the U.S. Time to call in the old ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN lets me change my online location and trick streamers into showing me movies that aren't available here in the U.S. of A. You want to watch Scream? Well, just open up ExpressVPN on your TV, switch your location to Canada, and you'll be streaming that Wes Craven classic in no time flat. ExpressVPN's got nearly 100 different countries to choose from, so you can find your favorite movie and TV shows from all your streaming services all over the world. I love it. You know, I love beating the system. Let's uh, let's screw over the the big guy, the fat cat. Said, "Well, trick them by switching countries. They'll have no idea. This is amazing. What a genius idea! ExpressVPN works on your laptop, phone, tablet, and more. You can protect yourself on every device. Just fire up the app, click one button to get started. So get your money's worth." And get three extra months of ExpressVPN for free when you go to expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Tuesdays. ExpressVPN.com slash Tuesdays. Hey, folks. This episode is also brought to you by Liquid IV. Oh, shit. You don't have to be an athlete to need extra hydration throughout the day. Liquid IV has you covered with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. No matter what you're up to, Liquid IV will keep you hydrated. Liquid IV hydrates twice as fast as regular water alone. Yes. Liquid IV is now available in three sugar-free flavors. White peach, green grape, lemon lime, with no artificial sweeteners in it. You just get amazing flavor without the gross, bitter aftertaste. Here, here. This stuff, I love it. As you know, I sent it to the fire department. They're yes. loving it. I give it to my neighbors. I mean, these guys send us so much liquid IV. Oh, Sarah yeah. Sarah loves it. I love it. I do a workout. I go home. I make love. It's hot out. It's warm out. It's cold out. You need to be hydrated. I put it in there. I mix it up. It's a delicious drink. Yes. I love it. I'm drinking it right now. The flavors are great. Pina colada, strawberry. Yeah. Yeah, they're all great. I do it every day. I'm hungover. I can't wait to go home and do one right now. Flavor is good. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free. It has no GMOs. Liquid wow. IV is an amazing addition to your hydration routine. Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code TUESDAYS at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TUESDAYS at liquidiv.com. Get Do on it. it. Uh, anyways, I, I mean, I got tons over here because I forgot. <laughs> okay. You were gone for a month. A month, yes. Jerry. Do you yes. ever have this with your wife? Do you ever, like, uh, you say, I'm just running a bit now. Do you ever you tell your wife, 
look, look, like you're watching something. She's looking at her phone. You're like, look at this guy. Look at, look at, look at, look at. And then she's like this. Oh, what yeah. is it? And you're like, it's gone. It's gone. You gotta look you... when I say look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very that, frustrating. Very frustrating. You gotta look now. I have that with uh, Uber drivers too. Pull over right here. What's that? Pull over right here. Stop, stop, stop. And they just keep going. I'm like, stop, stop. Drives me fucking crazy. Yeah. I happens in the car. I'm like, look at this car. Oh my God, this car is great. Come on, blah, blah. She's like, what is it now? And I'm I like, know. he's 300 miles back that way. Yeah. George I feel Sinko. bad for people when, the, when they don't listen like that. Like, there was, I was at the coffee shop today. The guy's like, what can I get you, sir? And he's like, uh, he's looking at a YouTube video. He's like, uh, I'll do the, uh, oh, wow. That long. And I'm like, order the fucking thing. This poor guy's waiting for you. How about when I was in Vegas? I was at Skankfest. I was meeting up with Ian and Lev and Karen, the whole crew over there. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I am can't have someone waiting for me. It makes me sick to my stomach yes, to think yes. people are waiting for me. Don't I'm at Starbucks. That. There's an old man, like, returning something. Mm. All these old people, they go to Vegas. He's got, like, a sheet of paper with a... A code on it, and uh, the, what, do you, what do you call that? The the barcode, yes, the yes. serial code, serial killer. He's like, I think it's six four eight three, and the line. There's three hundred and fifty people in line. There's one Starbucks within eighty five miles, and I'm like, you cock sucking cunt, get yeah. out of here! And you just want to hand them three hundred bucks. You're like, here you go, here's there my winnings. Go. Take it, get your cup. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I want a $7 cup of tea because they rape you at these casinos. I know. Wait, what are you going to return to the Starbucks? Hey, I got half a croissant here. I mean, what are you returning? I think he bought a cup. Or it's probably a deal. They, oh, it's uh, they a give deal. you a free thing. Whatever the fuck. The oldies love the coupons. But a nice uh, Tuesday jumped in line and uh, bought me some stuff. Not what? jumped in line, but he was like, hey, let me buy you tea. Oh. So that was very nice. The Tuesdays are so Kind. I the can't best. even describe how nice everybody is. And everybody's been so good about gifts and hugs and emails and cards. It's really quite touching. I appreciate it. Love the gaze. All right, let me get into some stuff Please here. Please, put it in my dick hole and see if it stings. This was fun. Uh, so my niece moved to New York City, which is crazy. Oh, how old? She's 18. She's a wow. freshman at Pace University. Wow. Good it's for her. mind-blowing. Yeah, she's just in college. I'm like... Proud of her. I have yeah. pride, Jerry. You also want to be like, be safe, be careful, because we did it. We were a couple of knock around Jews, you know? She's a little lady. I know, and also the city's changed quite a bit. That's true. Back in 07, it was a little more peace and love. Now it's horrifying out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Now it's, you're in pieces. And I was 25 and had lived in Everett, Massachusetts. So this is a, a move up. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, uh, you know, and I had your done, friends. I had done some traveling and, and, yeah, knew a lot of people and was drunk. So yes, that was all good. Very drunk. Um, but, yeah, so it was very exciting. So she came down with the family. We moved her in, which is very exciting. You get emotional. You're moving a person in. Sure. Which is fun. And then we went all over the city, toured around the city with uh, my nephew came and my, and my well, actually, no, he sprained his ankle in a soccer game. So he didn't come. But my dad came down uh-huh. and that was fun. And he helped her move. So I had my, my sister and my brother-in-law and my niece, and we walked through Central Park. This is just a sweet, gay story, but we're walking through. They wanted to see the sites, so I'm taking all the sites. We walked through um, Strawberry Fields there oh, with the John Lennon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I do the same joke every time. I say, this is where Paul McCartney's buried. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. A couple people laugh, and someone goes, what? Uh, there's always that guy. Well, it's funny, because it's a tribute to Lennon. McCartney's not dead. No one's buried there. It's a fun Sure, the bit. walrus is dead. So then this guy, you know, it's all musicians playing Beatles tunes, and the guy says, uh, well, I'm going to play a Ringo song. And I said, uh, nobody reacted. And I went, yeah, Ringo. And he's like, you like Ringo? And I said, I love Ringo. And I said, uh, I love Octopus's Garden and, uh, you know. The other one. Uh, with a little help my friends. Yes. Oh, that's Ringo? Yeah. Hey. And I said, um, what do you call it? Uh, put a Ringo on. What it. was the other one? Oh, oh the uh, they're gonna put me in a mood. Oh, act naturally. I was like, act naturally. There you go. And he goes, uh, I was like, huh? And he goes, well, I'm not playing any of those. And I was like, ah. And he goes, name one more. And I went, don't pass me by. And he went, that's the one. Hey, and I went, hey, it was fun. We had a fun connection. That's great. And then uh, he starts singing, and I started singing with them. Ah. I was singing along, and then he gave me this. 
Uh, like a nun. So I came over and stood with him. I sang the whole song with him. Oh, I thought he was like, get out of here. No, he gave, me, he gave me like the, come over here. Whoa. Yeah, so I was like, don't pass me by. Don't make me. And we had some eye contact. What? And we had a little crowd over there. That's great. That was very fun. But it was fun because he had the, come on, name one more. And I was like, how about this one? He's like, that's the one. That's the one I know. Everybody, it was quite a sight. I felt like a million bucks. That's a, it feels like a community moment. Like you're in New York City. You're doing the, you're, you're singing with the locals. We connected and we sang and I love to sing and uh, I'm, I'm gay and the family was like, hey, he's a crazy nut, this hey, guy. Hey, what, what an uncle. That was, I've never, my uncle was a cop. He was terrifying. Yeah, You're I'm out there funny. singing with these gays in the park. Well, I'm a funkle. So that was really fun and that was sweet. And uh, he had like a beautiful arrangement too. He, he, he sang it different. It wasn't mm. like, he, he did his own kind of thing with it. That I don't care for. So that was exciting. And then, so then it's like crazy because the family moves in. She moves. She now lives in college. Wow. And they all took, my sister and brother-in-law and dad, they took a late night train. My dad was in town for 10 hours. Mm. Came in the morning, left at night. So they all Will leave. You go to Skank Fest? I do. Uh, I go to the cellar. I do a couple spots, and I text my niece. I'm like, this is crazy. We're in the same city. We're going to bump into each other at some point. And she says, well, what are you doing tomorrow? Do you want to oh. show me and my roommate around, show us how to use the subway a little bit? Okay. So I say, uh, great, let's let's do it. I didn't tell this, did I? Boy, great. you're a different uncle than me. I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm busy. You know, I don't want to hang out with my niece. Well, I can't lie. That's the instinct, of course. Sure. The first thing you think is like, oh, I'll be out of town. Yeah. And then you're like, what am I talking? This is my dream. This is the thing that happens dream. in life is you move to New York. You know the city. All I want is for someone to come and be like, well, how do you live? What's it like down here? Sure. How do you live? So now you have somebody that's like, show me the ropes. Right, right. Because you want to share whatever with, you want to share your life with family. I guess, I guess so. You want to be like, oh, well, this is how you do this. And you have all this. Wi What's the point of having wisdom if you're not sharing it? You got to share. So I go, yeah, I'll be down there. 9.30 a.m. I went right down to the city. We meet up. I take them like, this is how you get on the subway. This is how you swipe your car. There you go. This is that. Share. That's the other thing. Do you believe in life after love? So we went all over the place, and then I just rode back with them to the um, their, uh, what do you call it, dorms. And I mm. said, all right, see you kids later. Good job. That's High lower five. Manhattan uh, down there. Yeah, yeah way dicey. down there. Yeah, that's right. So then the next day was uh, whatever day. I was doing Feehan's podcast, ah. which is also records downtown. That's right, downtown. So I went down there, did her podcast, and I said, I'm going to go over to, you know, uh, Ground Zero, walk around over there, like to, you know, put my ass over there. And the tourism is way up. Oh, is that right? Well, it just feels like I went to Ground Zero not too long ago, and it was just jammed. I couldn't even see the tower. Oh, wow. Well, it's, it's gone. So ah, I was- I Most was, of them? I was down there. Sniffing around, and I, I, I was like, oh, my God, my niece lives down the street. Ah. So I gave her the challenge. I said, I want you to come oh. meet me here. I and, love cause it. Because at first I was like, why don't I go get her? Yes. But I'm like, well, she's an adult. She lives here. Yes. So I said, all right, come meet me at Ground Zero. And she's like, okay, and I, I, I think it. I can do it. And I said, all right, call if you get in any trouble, but just follow the big building. Good for you. So I stood in the corner, and then I see her in the distance, my teenage niece. Uh, I remember when she was bored, and I, I, I got teary-eyed, Jerry. Oh, uh, I'm hard. She's walking up. I said, you did it. And she's like, yeah, what are you going to do? You know. Uh, so it was just very exciting, and we walked all around the West Side Highway and all that shit. And That's great. I, I mean, had to take a dump, which was weird. Yeah, well, when you when you have kids though, and that those training wheels come off, and he gets that shaky first ride, and he nails it with the bike. Woo, man, I'm gonna fuck him in the ass. I can't wait to do that. So that was really fun. And then, uh, oh, that was the other thing. I took them when well, I was taking uh, my niece and her roommate around. I was like, let's go have lunch at the Olive Tree because I take her took her to the village. Mm. You gotta take it everywhere. And then sometimes it's hard because you're like. You go to the bitter end, I'm like, this is where Woody Allen and Bill Cosby started their careers, Richard Pryor, and they're either like, who? Or they're like, the rapist guy? Yeah, yeah, that's it's a lot changed. So, you know, I'm like an old comedy nerd. Right. I'm like, Woody Allen was in here, and they're like, I don't know who that is. And I'm like, yeah. well, whatever, he's very funny. They're like, he had a voice in Ants. Yes, the exactly. Pixar movie. They're too young for Ants. Yeah. That came out. We were in high school when that came out. That's only uncles. So, uh, yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> I prefer aunts, though. Uh, uh, these people that say aunt. You say aunt? I say aunt. Yeah, that's gay. You say aunt? Of course. Oh, what are you, royalty? Aunt is a different aunt. word. Aunt uh, is A-N-T. Aunt. Aunt. You, you like the U. A-U-N-T. What about the auntie? 
Auntie. That's a black thing. No. It's my auntie. No. Where'd you get the 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 why? I like green tea. <laughs> no, I, don't I know. like a tea bag. Uh, this stinks. But anyways, hey, so T Bone. What's that now? Hey T Bone. <laughs> T Bone. It's ooh as an ooh ah. Uh-uh. <laughs> By the way, I almost got into it with Nate last night. His favorite episode is Andrea Dora. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Ah, uh, well, that part, the Andrea Doria chunk is gold. There's some fun stuff in there, but th- those... knock it on the wall. <laughs> Season eight, my God. Uh, and Kramer, uh, oh, it's in my book, uh, Astonishing Tales of the Sea. <laughs> he wrote a book. I wanted to, uh, you know, you don't want to get into it at a half. Sure, it's his sure. night. It's his big night. Radio City sold out. But if your favorite episode is season eight, forget about I it. I knew that would bother you. But uh, but uh, you can't get into it with Nate. I mean, we used to really go at it. That's going to be fun when your kid is going to love Sopranos. Ah, we'll you guys see. will have it out. I might give it another try. Sopranos, what? I'm going to really give it a, a fifth try. There you go. Fifth try is the charm. Um, but any fart, so I was like, let's go have lunch at the Olive Tree. Yes. It's Sunday. And <laughs> it's Sunday. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> season nine line. So any farts, we go in there. I don't realize there's a brunch show happening. Ah. So we're having lunch. We're hanging out. Liz comes by, and she goes, hey, do you want to go on? I'm wearing shorts, which is awkward. And then I, the, 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 the kids, these teenagers, I'm like, well, I'm going to go do a set. That's exciting. Alan Havy comes by. They get to meet him. And John Marco Cerezi, who like, they know from TikTok. Oh, so there it's you quite go. a thrill. Ryan Hamilton, and then uh, they got to watch me do comedy in the middle of the afternoon. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty good. I'm telling you, this is a crazy uncle. I'm some kind of funkle. This guy is bonko. So was uh, was the whole... You know what's fun about bringing a couple of teens to the cellar? Well, some bad to it, but uh, Liz has to be nice to you. Yeah, that she, was nice. She can't come over like, hey, you fucking asshole, what are you doing here? She did a little bit of that, but she's also nice because she was like, oh, downtown. She knows the city. She's like, there's a Target oh. over there. There's this restaurant. You should go to this place. Sure. So that was really nice, and uh, everyone was so nice. It was very sweet. Yeah. Now, let me throw this at you because this Please. one I think actually might be funny. All right, all right. Lick my ass. I tried to do this as a bit. It doesn't work. It never works, but maybe actually one... Are we doing bits now? What are we doing hit. Well, it's a story. Okay, okay. A that story I tried yet. to do as a bit, and it didn't work, but I think it'll work here, because I think it's funny. I need someone to discuss it with. Okay. I, I fly I'm to your Ch- man. I fly to Chicago. I got two shows at Zany's, two Pearl Jam shows, and two stand-up comedy shows. What a life. Good life. So I get there, and I land, I was like, well, morning flight, I had a headache, doesn't matter why, I don't know, I had a headache. So I had to go get some Tylenol and some water. Okay. So I go to the Hudson News, at O'Hare, one guy in front of me, Asian guy, and this guy just landed in America. You can oh, feel like, wow. no, not a lot of English. He, for some reason, his wallet, he's buying a few items, he's got nothing but $2 bills. What? What is this guy, uh, Supernatural? Now, I don't know this part of the story, how we got the $2 bill. Are they giving away $2 bills at the exchange? I don't oh, understand. that's probably what it is. So he goes to buy whatever, a Coke and, uh, you know, some Jujubes. Sure. He hands the guy four $2 bills, and the guy, he's like a Chicago guy, he goes, no, nah, man, he's like, these are good luck. Uh, <laughs> well, he's got nine of them. He's like, you can't be spending these. These are good luck. But the guy is like this. Ooh, what? Ruck? What? Like, I'm like, you're going to introduce the concept of lucky money <laughs> to this man? Just get him out of here. Keep him moving. Yeah. Take the money. Well, the cashier's defense is well, this guy will be dealing blackjack in about two months. But I'm like, well, you you believe in the luck? You take the twos. Ah, Jim good twos. Point. Good boy. Take yes. the money. And Terrible then, so twos. The, the guy's literally, he doesn't speak English, so he's handing him back the money. Like, you're the Chinese guy. Don't have to do the eyes if you don't want. All right, all right. But I want it to. I'm the guy. Hand me the money. There you go. Hing hong ha. <laughs> he goes, no, man, that was a good luck. And he's just handing it. So from too- his perspective, <laughs> he's trying to buy something. The guy's like, what? This isn't money? That's and he's hilarious. like, it's money, but it's like, that's, he's like, literally telling, he's like, my mother, when I was a kid, my oh. mother told me, those are good luck. You can't spend them. The guy's, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm, it sounds bad, but he's like. Like he doesn't yeah, speak yeah. any English. Of course. It's like imagine if you landed in China, right. exchanged your money, and the first place you went, they were like, That's oh, gold. No, no, no. That's crazy. I mean, how could he understand? And who is this one cashier who's not taking money? I get it, it's good luck, but after the third handoff, you just gotta just take it. Just take it. Just and take so it. He's back in his wallet looking for more money. And the only part of the bit that worked was I'm like, we're the only country that has like 
goofy money. We're like, right. oh, no, this isn't real. No, it's real, but it's like, we don't really spend that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I'm also like, $100 bills are lucky. $2 bills is unlucky. It's oh, worth nothing. It's two bucks. Yeah, that part didn't hit two either. Two buck Chuck. I stink. But yeah, I, I, I just thought it was insane. I, I was like, get out it. But the, for me, I was like, I just want to buy this thing. This I is know. in and out. I know. I, like, the idea of being like, luck. Ah, it's crazy. This is luck. The guy's like, "What?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's silly. But uh, it makes you want to just hit the. Uh, first of all, it makes you want to steal it. Like I'm just gonna take this and go. I almost did because this went on for realistically. I don't want to exaggerate. Four minutes. Jeez. Four full minutes Jesus where I'm Christ. standing behind. I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" That'd be hilarious. Why'd you miss the flight? Ah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, I, I had bad luck. He had good luck. And yeah. I just don't. Uh, I I don't understand. Also, I'm like, I hate. Luck. Ah, oh, luck stinks. Hold on to this. It's Ooh. lucky. I hate lucky's bad. Ghosts are bad. This, this house is haunted. Shut up. We have to have this conversation now with the haunted. I have to I have to appease you. You don't say. Oh, granny died in here. She comes back at night and moves a uh, a cup. Oh, dude, I got a bit of a ghost bit where I tried I tried to make fun of adults who believe in ghosts. It did not go good. Uh, I swear to God, you might you're better off. Picking a, a side in the Middle East debate wow. or abortion really? or police and black people. Seriously, I, th- I really think those are less <laughs> controversial than ghosts. Yeah, ghosts is a, is a it's a line in the sand, these ghosts. Because people, this 60%, I'd say we're in the minority with the ghost believers. Oh, we are. Yeah, yeah. This show is about ghost hunters that never wrap up. It's just like, oh, God, the meter's going crazy. Oh, we're in a warehouse. Huh? I heard something. Cut to commercial. Well, people are afraid of ghosts. I can't I- I, I mean, I never. I'm doing a lot of bits that don't work, but I was like, <laughs> someone was literally was like, "That's my number one fear." And I'm like, oh, "Do you know about cancer? cancer? What about cancer? Okay, how about murder? Cancer, AIDS, climate change, stab, AI. Shot. Uh, what's the thing that everyone's a- doing? The you, you, a fentanyl, fentanyl. Yes, uh, yes, COVID, anything. Yes, gay marriage. It. I mean, there's a lot oh, of scary stuff out there. That's terrifying. ISIS. <laughs> yeah, both of them take your head. ISIS, but, Hamas, yeah. all of it's horrifying. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. What, what's another one? Uh, by the way, the the uh, how about the reincarnation guys? Oh, you know, my my another life. I was uh, Alexander the Great. I never understand, like, wh- so wouldn't I have memory of my other life? Wouldn't I be sitting here being like, oh, remember I fucked that, uh, nah, that, that pig? that don't think memory. I think you start fresh, but they... So what's the point of another life, Well, then? that's what I'm saying. It's all horse shit. But uh, that, how would you know there's another life? If you have no memory of the life, then there is no other life. Well, it's all bullshit to begin with, and they never are, are a regular Joe. It's just like, oh, another life, I was uh, Attila the Hun. <laughs> like, no, you were scooping shit at the racetrack. It doesn't make any sense. No, it's all pipes. It's all wacky, but yeah. The ghost. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> and I try to do that. People are like mad. You can feel them. I yeah. think because people want... To think their dad is in the room. Or I whatever. think that's what it is. It's so just sorry, a your mechanism. parents are in the room with you at all times. Yes, grandma's with you. She She's, watches you jerk off. Yes, and you like it. I never understood that either. They're always like grandpa's watching down. But I'm like, if heaven exists, why would he be watching you? Wouldn't he be like getting Living. blown by a bunch of women? Exactly. It's supposed to be euphoria up there. Decent show. And if there's a heaven, your grandfather would go back to a time before you existed. Mm. He wouldn't want to be 78 forever. True. He'd want to be 29. That's true, yeah. But then he'd be like, you might get used to some of the technology. Mm. So that would actually be tough to go back to an Oldsmobile. You had to, like, crank it. Right. But it's heaven. I think the Oldsmobiles just work. That's true. I think in heaven you can get an iPhone no matter what year Ah, you're in. Well, now we got some... uh, to st- stitch stipulations? Yeah. Stipulations. Semantics. I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Stip. Steep. Steep is fun. Meryl Steep. Steep trouble. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, y- y- you gave the Chinese guy 100 bucks or what happened? No, eventually he figured it out. But I was furious. And like I said, I had a headache. And then, you know, O'Hare, it takes nine oh, days to get that down. It's like God. you're on a pilgrimage. It's one corridor you just, and you're all doing it it's it's run run rudolph every time it's jam packed and uh that, that airport hadn't been updated since 1916 o'hare sucks oh i had to fly O'Hare. united jerry by the way hey welcome to the club oh my god it was i couldn't get in the club i was like i got first class like only international i had to sit out with the fucking little people on the chairs with the thing i mean i haven't not been in a lounge in five years you gotta love i, mean, I got two lounges now 
Mm. Well, I tried in the American Express Lounge, but they were like, this is a bullshit car. This is like a car they give to children. Hey, they told me the same thing, but he broke mine in front of me. He's like, this is trash. Well, I've never used it. I just got it because Sarah has one. I don't even know what it is. I don't understand credit cards. I'm all debit. Same. You just don't want to use fake money or two, fake apparently. Money. That's what it all credit is just liquid up there. It's just, oh, yeah, you owe credit. Yes. I want to use the money I have. Right. Credit is made up money that you pay back later. By the way, these lounges are are buttoning up. Believe did you, me. Did you hear the news? But then they pushed back on that because everyone oh. was like, you fucking Nazi cow piece of shit. Oh, good. And they were but, like, we're just kidding. Oh, okay, good. But I will say, they're getting a little full. They're very full, yeah. They're very yeah. full. The food line's great. You can't get a seat. All yes. the plugs are taken. Yeah, so Butt I'm actually plugs. okay with it because I, I hit Diamond again for next year. But the year after that, because I'm, you know, the baby, I'm gonna travel less. Maybe what, we'll see. What's better, diamond or platinum? Diamond. Diamond's oh, tip top. Okay, I'm platinum. Ooh, I gotta, ouch. I gotta hop back up there. Yikes. Well, the year's about to roll over anyway, so yeah. I think we start from scratch. Yeah, I gotta use the the scratch miles. Sniff. But uh, but anyway, I got a couple more Chicago. If please, you want, please. you want to throw something in there? I no, mean, no, no. It's all you. Okay, are you sure? I just want to put s- this on the record, or else they'll fucking bomb my house. Did Hershey? It was great. Drove to D.C. Two and a half hour drive. Beautiful day. D.C. was unreal. Killer crowd. I love that town at the Capitol Hall Center or whatever. And uh, Jason Katz drove in. He's like, I had the worst day driving in. It rained. It took me seven hours. And I go, you want to drive back tonight? And he was like, yes. But we did it. And we got home at three in the morning. By the way, I just thought of this. D.C., Chocolate City. Yeah. And you came from Hershey. Whoa, that's the real chocolate, chocolate city, city to Chocolate City. That's true. How Hershey's about that? Kiss. Well done. That's fun. Hershey, uh, Pennsylvania, home of Michelle Wolf. That's right. Or that's whatever, right. Former home. You know the guy Brooklyn. made Hershey and just started a town. The town, he made it. He's like Willy Wonka. Is that right? He just was like, I want to make my own town. Only like 10,000 people live there, 14,000 people. But it's all candy. I stayed on Chocolate Avenue. I took a ride on uh, Hershey Squirt Lane. I mean, it was all chocolate, Jerry. I got some balls that live on Hershey Squirt Lane. (laughs) Um, Wow, that's fun. Hershey, PA. You know, when you're selling out in Hershey, PA, you know you got something going. Well, they drive in from Harrisburg and Mechanicsburg and Iceberg Lettuce. Yes, it's still Hershey. Okay. You're still selling out in Hershey. I'll take it. You're not it. flying in from Houston. No, it's, no flights from Houston. It's, it's still something. All right, I'll I mean, take that's, it. That's I mean, that's really that's an accomplishment. I was hoping they'd put a Hershey bar in the goddamn green room just to be like, hey, welcome to Hershey, but no, no bar. I would think the whole green room is built out of Hershey bars. I tried biting the walls. <laughs> Nothing there. Pillow biter's a weird, uh, yeah, you pillow biter. I think that's brilliant. I guess so, because you're, Cause you're fucked in the ass yeah, you're until like, you're biting the pillow. You gotta, you gotta take it. Now, you ever had a woman bite the pillow? Because I've seen a woman bite a pillow one time, and it's really something. No, I've seen a woman bite me. Never a pillow. That I don't care for. I don't like getting bitten. The lip bite? What are you doing? You're hurting me. No, I never got it. I never got the slapping, the hitting, the squeezing, the, the punching. I don't pain, get it. The 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 asphyxiation bullshit? No. I don't understand. The only pain I like is a high heel right up my chooch. Woo, that's a pump. <laughs> yes, really. Pump in the dump. The pump don't work because the vandals took the handles. I really want that thing up there. Oh, yeah. That's an eight-inch stiletto, baby. And then just break it off and let it live in there for a couple days. I'll make an appointment. <laughs> All right, well, hit me with, uh, don't go to Payless. You're banned from there. <laughs> Payless. <laughs> hit me with... gay, pay less, gay more. <laughs> hit me with uh, Chicago fatty. All right, well, I, this is a lot of stuff here. The Chinese guy, $2 bill. So we go to Chicago, and it's like a make-a-wish. We're going to Pearl J. Jam Tuesday night at the United Center, and then Wednesday, Zanies, two shows Ooh-wee. sold out, which is nice, and then Thursday, back to Pearl Jam again. You're not sick of the Pearl? <laughs> no, no or sick. Or the Jam. I love the Jam. I like to swallow it. Pearl necklace. Jelly. I love it. You know, they only come around every couple of years, so you just go to a couple of shows. And okay. It's very fun, very exciting, and you see all the same people, and Cantor, and Mike Tui, the comic, he came out, and my buddy Dave Stewart, who's a Massachusetts State Trooper, thanks for your Ooh-wee. service. Although he works in a lab, he's like a lab guy. Come on, trooper, my ass. Kind of annoying. <laughs> Not doing any trooping. He's got the badge and the thing, and then he's just, he's a Tuesday, too, but he's like, wears a suit and looks at, like, 
stem cells. I'm like, come on. It's like those. I was in the military for 10 years. You, you, you were accountant yeah. for the military. I want a friend who smashes people through the windshield. Yes. You know what I mean? Slide really, across the know, hood on your ass. Takes out the stick and really gives them a good beating about the ankles and shit yes. area. No time for backup. Get out of here. Doesn't even check the evidence. Just... Give him a good beating. Uh, Hell yeah. (laughs) Um, But anyways, no, I'm joking, of course. He's brilliant. Great guy. So I got to see all those buddies. Canner, of course. So we go to Chicago. We do the go to the Pearl Jam show. It fucking kicks ass. It rules. They still got it. Eddie's almost 60. He's jumping around. You know, McCready's 63 or something. He's wailing. Great show. So then Wednesday, we're going to the Cubs game. Afternoon Cubs game. Wow, this is a weekend. Very exciting. And they did a thing where they gave out. Eddie Vedder shirts because he's a big Cubs fan. And so they did kind of a joint event. All right. And, you know, at Wrigley Field, somebody sings Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Okay. It's usually a celebrity, a local celebrity type of person. So we're all like, Eddie Vedder singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. This is going to be exciting. Hell yeah. So, and we have good seats. My buddy Bart, uh, who's the best, he's got. Great seat hookups. He's one of these guys that gets tickets to things. I love a ticket guy. He's like the mayor. He's a bartender. Ah. Named Bart. A bartender. Bartender. So he's got the hookup. So we got fucking kick ass seats, but we're kind of under the roof. So we're covered if it rains, but you can't see the press box. Sure. So it's seventh inning stretch time. All these Pearl Jam people are excited. We move out to see Eddie sing the seventh inning stretch. And they go, ladies and gentlemen, Wrigley Field today singing the Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Jeff Garland. Oh, hold on. Garland. Garland. Not even Judy. Jeff Garland. So we're like, ah, we shuffle back to our seats. And I love Garland. You know me. I know it loves Kerr more than my asshole. Sure, sure. So we shuffle back to our seats. It's Garland. And he's fun. A one, two, take. You know, he does the whole thing. And he probably made it silly and goofy. Silly, goofy, fun. But we wanted Eddie. We wanted to see Eddie. Instead, we got Garland. Yeah, it's a big drop off. He's big. like two Eddies. He's like if someone ate Eddie. Yeah, Eddie Eddie. So we go well, right. Eddie White. He's spaghetti Eddie. So we sit down, we go, okay, no Eddie, watch the game. I leave a little early, which I don't like to do, but I'm like, I got two shows tonight. Yeah, I go to the shower, yeah. I suck my own dick. I go back. We go to the club. This is Zany. downtown, uh Boys Town or Old Town. Old or, Town. Or, yes, yeah. yes. Boys Town is in uh, Mexico, Omaha. Oh, and sorry. also in my pants. It's Youngstown as well. Here in Youngstown. So I go back to the uh, hotel, shower up, go to the club. I'm excited. Two sh- sold out shows, which Hell is yeah. exciting. I love that room. Tui's there. He's doing spots. Terrible. Canner. And uh, the MC was great. I forget his name. Baseball player. Nice guy. Uh, Derek Jeter. No, different baseball player. Hank Aaron. Yeah. Mick Mike Jagger. Piazza. <laughs> um, so we go, we're hanging out, and they go, hey, just a heads up, we got a guest spot tonight. Ah, uh, here we go. Jeff Garland. <laughs> I go, come on. You can't dodge this guy. We That'd be just, great. If the guest spot was any better. We had just seen him. So I was like, oh, wow, we just talked to him. But now I'm a little nervous because Garland, he's big energy. and oh, he's, a, he's a headliner. Man. He's a local hero. So I'm like, does he want to do a, a short spot, whatever? He can't go short. So I'm like, okay, great. I mean, first of all, I'm thrilled to have him. I'm excited. They're like, yeah, he wants to come see you because I met him last year when we did the film premiere there. Oh. So he's a, a sweet, sweet man, and obviously very funny. And better to get Garland than a guy who's been co- doing comedy eight minutes. Right. So I'm like, okay, Garland's coming. So we do the first show. He doesn't come. He comes to the second show. And Garland, I mean, he is a force of nature. Oh, big barrel of chocolate. He's big and boisterous, and he's telling all these great stories. And I've never met anyone like Garland. Like, you talk about ADD. Like, he goes from a story to another story to a different story, and we're just howling. It was like our dad oh. was there. Oh, he's killing. Uh, he's killing. Everyone's excited, and we're asking about Curb and Curb this. But though this was funny. He was like, I was like, people forget how soon after Seinfeld Curb started. And he's like, no, no. It was a few years. Uh-oh. And now it's weird because, you know me, I like to be right, and I know my sure. I know my stuff. Sure. But he's in the show. Yeah. So I'm like... What am I going to do? Pick a fight with a guy? He's the star of the show. I think you got to go show him the numbers. Pull the phone out. Well, I didn't want to be that guy. And he doesn't slow down for long. But I was like, ah, I think it was right after. He's yeah. like, no, 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 no. It was a few years later. I had 2004. And I'm like. I think it was two years. Two years. Not even. 
99. It was May. The show ended May. I mean, I, I threw that out because he's like, when did it end? Seinfeld. And I was like, May 15th, 1998. Oh, I tried damn. to let him know, you know, like, I tried to give him a little, oh, like, yeah, a little chin music. Although it might have been the 16th. It was when Sinatra died. Sinatra ah. died. Look up if it's the 15th or the 16th. I'm starting to question myself. Okay. Oh, might have been the 16th. Go but it was on. the day after Sinatra died, maybe the same day. Okay. Give me the new. Give me the Sinatra death Seinfeld finale. I think it's May 16th. I'm changing my answer. Oh, you Final the answer. First one. 98. May 14th. Oh, oh shit. Man, Garland. Damn it. When did Sinatra die? Uh, let's see. May 14th. Ouch. Fuck. Well, a lot of time has passed. It's 25 years ago. Sinatra's death. <laughs> May 14th. Okay. All right. You got right, that. I'm back. You got that. Okay. Woo. Same oh, I'm year? so embarrassed. Can we edit this? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm going to kill myself. Anyways, May 14th. There you go. What happened to the 16th? Something, I'm sure. But anyways. Yeah, I think Farrah Fawcett died. And I, I believe Curb, the first episode, is October of 99. Pull it up, Fanny. But that I looked up afterward. But I do remember being in high school. Yes. And so that's why Great. it was one of those things where you're like, I remember being in high school and there was a buzz. Oh, Big Bob, I watched. We all watched the last episode as a family. So... Um, Must see TV. I've lost my phone. But the curb, I think. Uh, First episode. Let's see. Yeah, curb was premier ninety nine pilot. But it was one of those things too. Where you can't say to everyone in the room, "You're yeah. like, I'm right." He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's tough. It says October seventeenth, nineteen ninety nine. There what? you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not even. It's like fifteen months later. Oh my lord! I didn't think it was that close. Or whatever, a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Wow. no, I was like, I was in high school. Wow. Uh, but anyway, so that was fun. But anyway, he told a million stories and just had it going all night. Then he did a guest spot. This was this was weird and funny. So he's like, all right, I'm going to do a guest spot. And I had Tui on the show. I, we had an MC Mike Tui, Cantor, and me. Ah, okay. And then Garland's doing a guest spot. So, Already won too many. So Canner comes over, and he's like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Jason. He goes, oh, what are you, the MC? And he's like, no, I'm the feature. And so Garland's like, wait, so you're going on too? Yeah. And he's like, so, okay, so you're going on, then me? Or should I go on? And ah. Jason's like, you go on. So Garland goes before Cantor, which is a little weird. You so, think the big guest spot would go right before. Yeah. So it's host Garland? Host Mike Tui. Then Garland, Garland then, then Cantor. Cantor. All right, so Cantor's got to disappoint him after Garland because they get a celeb and then Cantor. Well, so to it, they bring up Garland and it gets like a, a little pop, but not, not as crazy as I thought it was going to be. I think he's around. I think he's haunting Chicago. He, they see him at Chipotle. They might see him, but also I think Curb's not as big mm. as it was. I think a lot of people don't know Curb like we do, maybe. Right. I don't know. Right. But he got a nice little pop. So he goes on, and he, he's fucking around, goofing around. And then he goes, why don't I just bring up the next comic? Uh, he was very nice to me. He was like, I can't wait to see Joe. He's so funny, which is very sweet. Yes. And uh, he's like, why don't I bring up the next guy? What? T- I'll just bring him up. What's his, What's your name? And he goes, uh, we all go, Jason. Jason Cantor. And he goes, okay, great. And he does another bit. And <laughs> this is hilarious. I don't know. Tell me how you feel about this. He goes, all right, I'll bring up the next guy. Jason, come here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's his whole intro. This. I don't like it. He goes, Jason, come here. Uh, so now Cantor's a little annoyed. He goes up, and he throws a couple zings oh, Garland's way. He's a wild card, this Cantor. And so then Garland's in the back. He starts yelling. Oh, Not mad, but kind of yes and. He's an improv okay, guy, so he's, he's going, ah, well, this. And he gets a couple laughs, and Cantor goes, boy, you're getting laughs now. You should have done that up here. Oh, we and got so a roast battle, laugh. baby. And so I'm like in the back oh, ducking. Oh, my God. I borrowed May's old trench coat yeah. and hit under that. I'm like, I can't look. Worlds are Gliding. But luckily, Garland is very humble and sweet, and kind of, he took it all in stride. But I, w- I was so scared that Garland was going to be like, hey, why don't you fuck yourself, you piece of shit? Yeah. So I, I, it was terrifying. Well, and, good uh, for Canada to hold his own and get that clip there, can't, can't, because that, uh, that's a hot one. You and Garland going back and forth? That's a good point. That could go viral. I have a point. But, uh, yes, yeah, so that was fun. Canner killed. I went up. I, I did okay. I felt like the crowds weren't hot. Ah, but so it was a Wednesday night, you know? and that room is long. I, I never, I prefer Rosemont. Rosemont, I always say I want to shoot a special at Rosemont. I love that room. Great club. Um, <laughs> I might shoot a special there, maybe. But um, yeah, yeah. Oh, you heard it here first. Zany's, um It was fun. It was great, and then uh, that so that was exciting. Oh, so then we all hang out after late 
late night. We're all just sitting there. He's telling stories all night. We're asking him some questions. He's telling some great Larry stories and oh, the whole thing. I'd love to hear him. And Jerry story. And he's shitting on some comics, which Ooh, was fun. And we spicy. talked about who's great and that guy's great. A million stories. Great hang. I mean, mm-hmm. Jeff Garlick just couldn't be nicer. Yeah, great guy. And a fun, fun hang. And uh, it was so sweet. And then I was like, he was staying at Four Seasons. And I was staying not too far from there, not nearly as nice a hotel. Mm. Um, so he's like, well, I'll get you a ride. We'll share a ride. Wow. Look and at I that. I said, okay. So he gets like a big SUV black car, you know, and I go, okay, great. So we get in the car and he's telling more stories. Mm. And then we pull up to the Four Seasons. Jay Moore. And there's a big crowd out there, including like family. They look like migrants. They were like sleeping on the ground. There's young mm. ladies just sleeping up the sidewalk. It was like being in New York. And I go, what the hell's going on here? And he goes, oh, there's a huge pop group staying at my hotel oh so as the car pulls up my they pop. all jump up in excitement they got pads and cameras oh, and boy. phones and they're crying and i'm like this is hilarious yeah there's 150 teenage girls and their parents ah. out here with balloons and crayons and flowers yeah yeah door swings open and out walks jeff garland oh a fat jew and a, and a nobody comedian and they all just go that's just him and the, <laughs> they all just go uh, and so I yelled out, he's famous too. There he's you go. very famous. And he goes, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, and I go, he <laughs> is, he's huge. Get his autograph. And he slams the door. I think he was upset. I can't tell. Maybe uh, he was kidding. He slams the door shut. And as we pull away, he's just got a circle of people. Uh, I assume just explaining who he is. Because oh, I mean, these girls were 12 years old. I can see him. I'm not anybody. I'm nobody. <laughs> oh, oh. He's got that voice thing. Well, he's, he's, he's pure gold. And uh, it was great to see him and happy to have him. And uh, yeah. Garland. It's yeah. So exciting. What, I You're mean, like, uh, he's friends with Larry. I always say, imagine back to 2027 or something, 20, 2007. And you're just like, I will be in a black car with Jeff Garland doing two at Zane. He's going to see Eddie Vedder twice and going to a Cubs game. And it's wild. And not only that, but like when they're like, Jeff Garland's coming, you're like, huh, okay. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. All right, we're going to work this. Yeah, Jason Alexander's on his way. Eh, all right, let me uh, figure this out. You're like, shit. All right, well, I guess that'll be fine. But yeah, no, it was awesome. And uh, yeah, Good. Chicago rules. That oh, is one of our real it. cities. Chicago. Great city. It feels like, well, it's on the border, but a lot of these San Fran's and these Portland's and uh, whatnot, New York, have gotten a little frosty. Mm-hmm. But Chicago it seems to be holding strong. Well, Chicago is just. It has to be the most fucking beautiful city ever. And I, I went, by the way, I went straight from Chicago to San Francisco, which was such a pleasure to just have three days back to back in the two most beautiful uh, cities. You have can't to be the two it. most photogenic cities. I talked about this with Sally, who's a photographer. And he's like, I'm partial to New York. And I'm like, of course, New York is so beautiful, of course. But I mean, Chicago and San Francisco, those buildings, that old style. I mean, what a beautiful country. I hope that. It's- yeah. And we, it's you know, new. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's coming together. I mean, uh, people keep saying there's a civil war coming and the, we're, we're an empire that's imploding, but I, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, maybe. I hope so. I have a child. Uh, I don't know. People, you know, people that have a child, that's scary. But people keep saying, like, oh, climate change, but they keep moving to Malibu. Yeah. Well, so, we'll see. We'll Hopefully, see what happens. I think AI will suck the carbon out and shove it in her ass. There you go. Well, AI, I hope they suck my dick as well. And uh, give <laughs> I, me the, I, the software for that. That probably exists. Oh, oh really? Oh, it'll be soft. Hard drive. Um, all right, we got to do some, some plug yes. rules. I'm coming to the DC Improv. Oh, chocolate. Cite. Uh, November 17 and 18. I'm, I'm trying to do just Friday, Saturday, because I'll have a child, but I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. But for now, let's just say November 17th and 18th uh, at the Improv in D.C. One of the great clubs. And then I'm in Tacoma, back in Tacoma in January, I believe. And I got a bunch of dates coming up on the books. I don't have them with me right now. I'm focused on some other stuff. But please join the Patreon, for God's sakes. I need diapers, and there's killer shit on there. Yes. Chuck is just roaring over there with the ideas and the stuff and the uploads and the yes. business. This it's is insane. where you really shine. There's so many different options, queefs and, and episodes and breaking down stand-up and extra bonus episodes and live episodes going back years. I mean, it's a, it's a hot little ticket. Hot ticket. And I got to plug my podcast, Mindful Metal Jacket, because if people don't start watching, I have to stop doing it. And then everyone gets disappointed that ah, does watch it. That is tough. Uh, but it's a, it's a great show. We had Colin Quinn on. Uh, Ron on just did an episode. Our- which 
Ari. This is fun. Uh, there's an Ari one, Karen Fee, and a bunch of people you don't know that you should check out because they're really interesting also. And uh, Ali Makovsky, Henry Phillips, ah. Chris Walsh, all those are coming up. So it's a fun show. Hell yeah. Check it out. And uh, I'll be all over the place. MarkNormanComedy.com. Just added new dates uh, for 2024. And uh, I just want to thank everybody who's been coming out. They've been hot shows. And I know the hour isn't uh, 100% yet, but we're all working on it together. And yeah, thanks for being cool and great crowds. Chucky? Woo, check out my podcast, Fun Bearable, with uh, my buddy, comic Ray Harrington, and my improv buddy, uh, Brad Rohr. We're doing Halloween episodes all month. We just did a whole thing at Best Video in Connecticut, which is like an old school VHS oh, store. That's fun. Where we went through the entire movie series of Saw, because the new Saw came out. Oh, yeah, great. Saw 10, which has good reviews, by the way. It was, the, it was awesome. So I, I couldn't wow. believe it. It was like the first good one in I don't know how long. Now, do I have to see Saw 10, Saw 9 to get Saw 10? Not, no. No. Aces. You just have to see Saw 1, basically. Okay, I saw mm, Saw 1. I saw. Saw, saw. It's very good. But yeah, check out Fun Bearable at funbearablepod.com. Uh, yeah, a lot of Halloween stuff. It's a lot of fun. And join the Patreon. We're dropping limited merch here and oh, there. Oh, that's We're right. We're dropping limited signed posters. Very low quantity. They sell out Ooh. immediately. L- and people limited. seem to really en- enjoy them and have a lot of fun with them. Well, yeah. the design is killer. And uh, we got to get some shirt stuff going again i don't know who has yeah. the shirt money i don't know who wh- what network it's through but shelby's sitting on a pile of shirts do people think. send you money Every once in a while we get merch pump we'll good. send us like 48 bucks yes, <laughs> yes. from gas digital that's Seriously. good yeah well if you want to work on joking it's like 51 dollars. yeah and then we split that yeah. i gotta say the new print was by todd bratrude who works with like he, oh, he reached todd. he reached out to me and I was like, yeah, let's do the Gramercy thing. It came out amazing. I looked at his Instagram. He works for like Nike and like yeah, huge he's good. brand. Wow. He he's like incredible. A, a skateboard deck. Todd he's, Gack. He's, he's amazing. So we he just did that pitch. one, and we're hoping to do another one with him, like a limited Christmas one for the Gramercy show in Hot December. Dog. So Yes, right. see you in December, folks. Come on out. Let's sell this one out. Yeah, we need yeah. to get back in the saddle. We I, got some, get... I got some ideas. Okay, was, good. Uh, October we, was ugly. We got to get a uh, great crowd, just limited, yeah. but we got to get... Some big fucking names in there. How about this? I just got done eating with Seinfeld. Oh, Nate. Yeah. Well, that'd be funny That's if it was Ron on. You're out, buddy. I'm out. You, you know, better well, do something quick. I, I got usurped. What's that mean? Uh, take it over. Ah. I'm, I got a award a day. Ah, that's Stipulation, fun. usurped, I'm cooking. You could be the new Wally Pip. Ah, Pip Squeak. All right, folks. Well, that'll do it. We'll see you in hell. Praise Allah. Thanks a lot. We love you. Love the game.